Hey, it's Joe from includingcake.com and today I'm here with David Taylor from coachingunlimited.co.uk. Um, hey David and thank you so much for letting me chat to you today. Um, I'll Hi, let you, uh, thank you. I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, so if you had to sum up who you are in, I don't know, a sentence or two, what would that, what would that look like? I, I am passionate about having powerful conversations with people that help them discover what is extraordinary for them. I often ask people what is so far beyond the horizon that they can barely even imagine it or something that's so deep inside they're scared to say it. And what happens when we go there is we often discover just the most, the most amazing miracles. Uh, and that's what I love to do. And so now you can see why I've got you on the, on the line today. Um, so to sort of briefly set the scene, um, just before we dive in, um, I first met um, met you, well, just a couple of days ago, really, um, at a coaching intensive weekend um, that you led and leads called Be The Miracle. And one of the things that um, that you brought to the space, um, is why of your own personal experience, was how you gained 15 kilos of lightness. Um, and that was just so fascinating to me as I've I've never heard weight loss considered in that way before ever it's just a perspective I I'd never seen it from and I couldn't I just couldn't stop thinking about it once I got home um and so I figured if I found you know this perspective so inspirational then my clients and sort of including cake followers and and people just in my my environment would benefit too um so that's what sort of drew me to reach out and and connect with you um and invite you to have a deeper conversation so here we are thank you i really appreciate it thank you yeah. um so i haven't really planned a specific set of questions i just kind of like this to evolve and you know turn into whatever mm. it take, form it takes um but that said uh, i have spent some time on your um, facebook page um and looking through the things you wrote because you're very um, you're very giving in your information and you're very you know you're prepared to be very vulnerable so there's a lot of stuff that you know i found particularly powerful so um, there are a few sort of key words and phrases that have jumped jumped out to me, and um, so I've kind of bullet pointed those as such to sort of form how we'll start. Um, so if that's cool with you, we'll um, we'll sort of take things take things in that. In that oh, way. Perfect. Sounds great. Um, okay. So um, the first thing that jumped out to me, um, and it might have been on a recent post, it just it said, um, "It's never about the weight. I didn't lose weight. I let go of fears, the fear of missing out." So just you know, tell me a little bit more kind of what the, the thought process of behind that was. Well, I, I think it's something that, it, it, certainly for myself, and so often in conversations with my clients, one of the drivers we have, and, and, and it gets to the old-fashioned phrase for it, would be keeping up with the Joneses. You know, mm. this idea of, you know, the next-door neighbour buys a new car, so you buy a new car. Yeah. Uh, it's keep, keeping up appearances. But the, behind that, there's this deeper part of us, which really is afraid that if we don't have something, we're missing out in some way. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just give a really, uh, as an example, I was on a coaching program recently, and somebody said that they joined the program because their friends had joined. It wasn't really what they wanted, mm -hmm. but they'd spent a significant amount of money because they were afraid of missing out. And so for me, when it came down to eating, and I think it probably comes from my childhood when there was a sense that, that, that food was highly valued and a scarce commodity. And certainly my grandparents and parents' generation, which went through you know, rationing where it was a genuine scarcity, it, this kind of passed on this sense of, uh, if, you are, if you're having a cake, I've got to have a cake. Mm. Because there's got to be this kind of, uh, if I'm not having something, I'm missing out. There's a sense of scarcity shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that... I think scarcity is such a powerful driver and you know there are many messages we, we, we receive every day from media from advertising from marketing from magazines that uh you know get the latest thing otherwise you're missing out mm -hmm. and so we constantly build up this fear of missing out yeah. and when it, when it came to eating it was that simple if someone else ate something or had a bigger portion i would have to have a bigger portion if they had seconds, I would want to have seconds. I would just literally have this fear that I was missing out on something. Mm. By yeah. letting go of that, 
by letting go of that, it was so much easier to eat less. Yeah. Um, it just it just simplified eating. It was I was completely in control of what I ate, and if I was complete, if I felt more whole, less of that fear, or or, or got rid of that fear, or just ignored that fear, then I wasn't compelled to eat for emotional reasons. I was simply eating because I, I wanted some food and it was in front of me. Yeah, that's really interesting because it's a sort. Of, I mean, the fear of missing out is something that. I guess I often think about in relation to um, physical things that, you know, you see everyone's highlights on Facebook and you think, oh, no, you know, what have I missed? Or you go away on holiday for a week and you haven't been on Facebook. Oh, no, what have I missed? So it's something I hadn't considered in relation to food in the same way as as kind of activities and things. But that's um, such a good point. <laughs> but, well, uh, I think it's as we, as we talked about at the weekend, Joe, that how you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah, and that was going to be one of my next points, actually, because it's that that for me was really game changing because it, it I think I tell myself sometimes that I, I do show up or I, I do do things. But actually, it, it's the, the little things in the, the background that actually maybe I don't in the way that I think I do or the way I convince myself I do or I will do next week or whatever it might be. So that, um, yeah, that's a, that was a very interesting um, statement. <clears throat> um for me just just in you know in, in so many ways and i think not just obviously the, the the food side of things but um yeah it was very interesting well i um, think I, I think just you know just to build on that point around food um if i think about through my life it wasn't just food because i think the other thing and you, and you may you may you may think about af asking me this anyway i think there were two key fears that i was dealing with one was fear of missing out Mm -hmm. And the the other side of that fear was the fear of not feeling full. Mm. You know, this fear that this thing I've got to fill up. Mm -hmm. and, and if I think about through my life, I used to smoke, but I didn't smoke a bit. I used to smoke a lot. I couldn't mm -hmm. just like smoke a cigarette. I would smoke 40 cigarettes, mm -hmm. which is outrageous. And uh, think of other ways of filling up, like binge watching TV or obsessively playing computer games yeah. or, or let's get vulnerable sex. I mean, these are all things we do to feel full. Yeah. But here's, here's a question I was once asked by an amazing coach. He, well, it wasn't a question, it was a statement. He said, we can never get enough of what we don't really need. And to me, that was so powerful because food was filling up. I was trying to fill up with food. But I could never get enough of what I don't really need, so I would eat too much. I would always eat until I was stuffed. Yeah. And it's not like I was completely huge, but I was, in fact, I've had a new milestone since then. I, I was 15 kilos, it's now 15.8, which is 35 pounds of lightness I've gained since January the 1st. That's mm -hmm. the five months. Um, and it was, you know, I've never felt hungry uh, or rarely felt hungry. It was maybe once in a while, but very, very rarely felt hungry. I haven't craved anything. I simply ate less, nothing special, nothing unique. But by letting go of this fear of not feeling full, by letting go of the fear of missing out, it was so easy simply to change my approach to food. It's just so interesting because even when you sort of, when you when you touched on this um, yeah. during the weekend, I mean, I didn't sort of pick up on it in, in any depth then because it kind of, you know, wasn't the, wasn't the focus of the weekend, but, um, I just thought, that, is it is it that simple? I mean, I, I was talking to my mum about the um, about the you know about our, about our chat this morning and, and about that principle, and she said, but is it really that simple? And I'm, I, I mean, I couldn't answer because I haven't haven't been there, but and I know it's something that you know clients and uh, and people would say to me, but it's not that simple. But you talk about it as if it is. It, it is literally that simple, and it just fascinates me. To, I guess the what? um. The, the sort of the physical and mental I mean you, you say you weren't hungry is that because you'd I mean maybe maybe people expect they're going to be hungry and then they're then therefore they are hungry or I'm just trying to get my head around the simplicity of it okay so, so let, let me let me dig into it from I think yeah. two two examples yeah I I yeah what I don't want you to know about me is that I used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day mm-hmm I'm sure there were days when I smoked three packs. That's a lot of, that's a lot of smoking. Mm. Um, 
And it's funny because I didn't smoke all my life. There were times in my life for years and years and years I didn't smoke, but when I did smoke, I smoked a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I became a non-smoker, which for most people is, it's a, they can't get their head around that concept because most people become ex-smokers. And what happens is when you become an ex-smoker is all you are is a smoker who's not currently having a cigarette. Yeah. And one of the options in your life is having a cigarette. Mm-hmm. So to me, there's a deeper part of this, which is, Maybe, maybe the more difficult bit, but it's the bit that makes everything different and everything sustainable. What happened was I never made a decision to stop smoking. Mm-hmm. But what I did do was I made some decisions about my life, about being more whole, more complete, m- healthy. And so I started to create an identity and identify with that identity of a healthy person. And literally what happened was I woke up one morning and I thought, I've got no idea why I've got cigarettes. And I threw them away. I never smoked again. I went from 40 cigarettes to zero, literally overnight, never craved a cigarette, never wanted a cigarette, never thought why I would have a cigarette. And that was over 10 years ago. It's 11 years ago now, I think. And now in any given moment, it would never occur to me to have a cigarette because I'm a non-smoker. So this is, this is, it, 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 it's subtle, and maybe this is a harder thing, but the subtlety is it's about creating a sense of moving towards. Mm-hmm. I'm, I created an, I, an identity, the person that I wanted to be, that was a very positive thing. It was mm-hmm. about being healthy, about being whole, about serving others, uh, about being a coach. Mm-hmm. And that didn't include being a smoker. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't stop smoking, I started being something else. Mm -hmm. And the same with, and what I realized with eating, I always saw myself as someone who was a medium build person. Yeah. What I realized was that I got to a point where I kind of knew I wasn't quite a medium build person, but I got to a point where it was undeniable because the bathroom scales, having to wear size 36 inch waist trousers, and even they were get, starting to get tight, um, looking in the mirror and not being able to hold my stomach in that any longer, what I realized was that the person in the mirror wasn't the person inside of me. I thought I was a medium, medium built person, but all the external references were, I was actually someone who was well overweight. And in fact, I think my BMI thing, I was technically obese, not just overweight, but technically obese. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's Tony Robbins that says this. He said, we will do anything to remain consistent with our identity. Yeah. But here I was, I was completely inconsistent with my identity. And so I had to sit down and say, well, actually, what would a medium built person focus on? What would they think about food? What would they eat? What, how would they approach food? And it wasn't that so, and someone who was a medium build they wouldn't sit down and go, oh, I'm on a diet, or I'm eating special food. They would simply sit down and say, I'm eating till I don't need to feel the need to eat anymore. Mm-hmm. I won't have seconds. I won't eat something because someone else is having something. They would, they would have that in their lives. And so I literally sat down at the end of last year and thought, who would I be and how would I eat as a medium built person? Mm. And it was completely consistent with who I thought I was. <laughs> and so it became really easy. And if you, and the consistent thing about giving up smoking, eating, eating more rationally is I never stopped doing anything. So consciously I didn't stop. So if I wasn't stopping doing anything, if I wasn't focusing on the negative, there's nothing to crave. There's nothing to miss. There's nothing to crave. That's why I describe it as being easy because it's about moving towards being more of me. And if more mm. of me is a healthy, medium built person, then that makes it really easy. Mm. That's so interesting. There's so many things I've been making mental notes sort of as, as you've been just talking over the last sort of few minutes. And um, there are a few things I kind of want to want to dig into a bit more. I mean, one one, mm. um, one thing is just the sort of the, the concept of without awareness or acceptance, it's impossible to change. So that's kind of one thing, the awareness yep. to happen, because otherwise, you know, you are kind of the whole ignorance is bliss kind of scenario. Um, of so that's one element. But the identity thing is is so interesting because, I mean, you, you made this overnight change. But in terms of creating that identity of somebody, it was that a long process? I mean, talk to me about 
how that came about, how you you got consistent with what you thought you were. I mean, you know, is that? So, so I think so. I think all of my adult life, I have, in terms of my body size and body perception, my identity has been a medium build person. Mm. I think where what had happened was that there were certain behaviors I had that were driven by parts of me that I wasn't really aware of that were getting more food in than I needed. And so whilst I thought of myself as a medium build person, I got to a point where I couldn't ignore the reality, which is I wasn't. And so there was it was almost like there's schizophrenia, if you like, if I can use that word, but this kind of split personality of inside, I thought I was one thing on the outside. It was quite clearly something else. And mm -hmm. it was and that, and that something else was being driven by some behaviors, which I wasn't giving awareness to. So as soon as, so when I got to that point of, I've got to accept reality here. I'm not a medium person I'm lying to myself. When I got to that point, it was, realizing what are the one or two little things that might make the difference yeah it's true if someone else has a cake i have to have a cake if we go out and and they have a dessert i've got to have a dessert i just can't not have a dessert well what if i what if i didn't have a dessert what if i simply chose to be a medium build person because they wouldn't have a dessert mm -hmm. and so in that sense it was really easy and it's it, it's instant i mean this it's it is literally instant. The uh, what I needed to know came to me immediately. Okay. So I think, I think I think then it was the matter of making the decision, because there were probably a, there were probably a couple of false starts. There's probably a couple of times in the last two or three years where I thought I could do this, but I didn't make a powerful decision. Mm -hmm. This time, I thought I am so far away from who I believe I am. It's time. So that that's, was what, that was, that's what triggered yeah. it. That, it was, it, that was it, the trigger. It was a tipping point. Um, so and, I, and I kind of, I mean, I, I must admit, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. I don't, I don't, I mean, here's a couple of things that might throw you off there. I don't really <laughs> believe in goal set. I don't really believe in goal setting and I don't really believe in New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. So having said that, I decided to start on January the 1st simply because I thought, hey, Christmas, you know, at a time where we all kind of, mm -hmm festive and you know we enjoy food probably more than other times of year so i'm going to participate in that yeah and then on, in january when that's over that will be a great time to jump into my new yeah. identity or, or, yeah. or actually it's my old identity just more complete uh, it's, and good. That's what I did. it's a good marker as well i mean i, I I'm, I'm similar i don't do news resolutions but i always think it's useful to begin something january the first because you can always remember it easily rather than know, the 15th of october or something. um <laughs> so it's just absolutely yeah. <laughs> um, similar with birthdays it's just think i did this from this year to the next it's just you know, might as well make life easy for yourself to <laughs> remember it yeah. um but yeah because one of my notes i've written here about um about I don't I did not set a goal I set an identity and that, again I mean goals are very I mean for someone like me I tend to be quite hard on myself and I put myself under a lot of mm. pressure and expectation and a sense of having a goal means either you kind of you you achieve it or you kind of fail potentially there's a lot of failure that's wrapped up in that whereas yeah. setting an identity is it kind of obliterates that that whole yeah. everything which is uh yeah is <laughs> hugely interesting and uh takes away all the overwhelm which uh... well, it, it takes away the overwhelm and actually where does the overwhelm come from mm. um as you as we spoke earlier you know i shared something this morning that i i did something yesterday which i was disappointed in myself mm -hmm. and that and, that, and that's the crucial thing i was disappointed in myself it wasn't that i it was a bad thing um mm -hmm. i would have described myself as having some and, you know, as somebody else said, well, that's not sucking. That's brilliant. What you did was brilliant by any normal standard, but by my standard, I sucked. Mm. But it wasn't that that I made a mistake in, in, in the negotiation, which is what happened. It was actually the judgment of myself that I'd failed. And then I get mm. overwhelmed with this thought mm. of judging and not getting it right. And then mm. more judgment shows up because I'm judging myself. Yeah. And that's where we fail. You know, yeah. if I'm... And, and this is this is partly why I play with this idea of gaining lightness rather than losing weight. 
losing is about scarcity. Mm. And with when I'm losing, I, I'm a loser. I'm I'm missing out. Uh, I'm hungry. Whereas I'm gaining lightness, I'm mm. moving towards the light. Mm. Uh, and every time I move towards the light, it's great. And, and it's even the language around it. Mm. It's any, it's, you see, the rules become any time I'm able to eat well, or any time I feel good about my body, or any time I move towards the light. And so if you have a series of rules that are easy to achieve, the judgment goes away, the self-punishment, mm. the scarcity, the messing up, all those things go away. And so, you know, between January and now, have I been out and stuffed my face and eaten cake and all that? Of course I have, because I'm a human being. <laughs> um, but I didn't go, oh, I've, oh, I'm off track. It's not going to work out. It was, I love that meal. Great. And that's it. I just let go of it. And the next meal I have will probably be a salad or something. And it mm. wasn't, I was, oh, next day I've got to eat nothing. It was, I love that night out. Yeah. But I don't have to have that every time. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because, um, I mean, the, just the concept of I gained 15 kilos of lightness. I mean, it, it, initially it, it sort of stood out to me because just the way it's phrased, no one says that. You know, it, people say, oh, I lost. Whatever. It, so, that, so that in itself was something that was hugely inspiring because it just forced you to take a different perspective. But it's mm -hmm. similar to how I... Um, how I often talk to clients and, and through my blog and when it comes to food the whole concept of crowding out is is about adding all the good stuff in and mm -hmm. kind of focusing on so much adding so much good stuff you're kind of not then really thinking about the fact that you're naturally getting rid of some of the bad stuff um and it, it that I, I liked that way of looking at it because it was similar to how I approach um sort of eating um the crowding out aspect and um yeah, and it's just looking at the positives. I mean, for example, people say to me, you know, vegan diet, you've got, it's so restricted. Well, I'm so, I eat so many more different things now. I've got kind of what would be, what would be considered a restricted palate because you've, you, I, I can explore so much more. I'm, I, it's given me an opportunity to, ex, to explore so mm. much for so much more. And it's just, it, I don't know, I just saw it in a totally different way to what people seem to, seem to, you know, think yeah. about things. And, it just it's just getting that kind of that side of things across to people because we are sort of conditioned to think of diets and restriction yeah. and counting and tiny weeny portions of stuff and it's just so refreshing to hear it talked about in such a sim simple um yeah. different way you know such a such a beautiful spin on it um so, so, I, so if, I was, if i was to summarize it it's to mm. think about it's it's decide who you are mm. and move towards. It's always about moving towards. Yeah. As you say, diet is about missing out. And mm. given that our fear of missing out is fed daily by media, Facebook, people, it doesn't serve us. Whereas if we move towards, it becomes simple. Mm. I'm reminded of this story. There's a, such a wonderful, beautiful man called Art Berg. He was a tennis coach and a skier and all sorts of stuff. And in 19, he broke his neck mm -hmm. and he was in hospital. He's now a quadriplegic. And he, in his medical records, his doctors diagnosed him with excessive happiness. <laughs> they said, they said he wasn't allowed to leave hospital because he was in denial about his condition because he wasn't upset enough. But he, this was what he said. He said, when I had my accident, before I had my accident, there were 10,000 things I could do in my life. Yeah. After I had my accident, there were still 9,000 things I could do with my life that I would never have time for. Mm -hmm. I could focus on them or I could focus on a thousand things I couldn't do anymore. Mm. That's, it. It's, that's it in a nutshell. It's, yeah. <laughs> if you focus on the thousand, then judgment, pain, scarcity, fear are going to show up all the time. If you focus on the 9,000, the 9,000 things I can eat and be an amazingly healthy person, as opposed to the 1,000 cakes I can't, mm. um, it doesn't serve you, it doesn't help you. Mm. It's about mm. focusing on what, you know, what's possible, what you can move towards. Yeah, no, that's, it's, yeah, it's so true. Um, I think one of the, I guess, in, in, to a certain extent, sort of one of, the, one of the final things, getting into a little bit of the, the sort of the nitty gritty, the actual day-to-day, -day, what you 
what actions you took. I mean, you talked about what you stopped doing and what you started doing, what you continued to do and what you didn't do. Um, I think yeah. it was one of the posts I read. And, and you know, what specifically, people will sort of think, oh, you know, he must have just eaten a lot of salads or he's saying all this stuff, but he, he's probably eating, you know, 1,200 calories a day or whatever. What, what sort of more matter-of-factly did you do or didn't do or, you know, and continue to do to but, sort of go along with that mindset? <clears throat> so I think if there was... A so the, so the main thing is I ate less. Mm -hmm. So if I was having pasta, instead of having 150 grams of dried pasta, I have 100. So mm -hmm. simply eat less. Mm -hmm. I, I still I love going out. I love Indian food. I love going out for an Indian. So going out for a curry, I will still have the things I had before, but I'd only eat half of the portion rather than all of it. Okay, so and given the, and given the Indian restaurants, they have massive portions. Yeah, eating half a portion is still pretty filling. You know, instead of having a big thing of rice, I'd have maybe three quarters of that. Instead of having the whole of the prawn curry, I'd have three quarters of it. I wouldn't have a whole non bread; I'd have half a non bread. So I wasn't giving up all the things I love to eat. I was simply eating a smaller amount of them. So that was certainly for evening meals. That would be yeah. true. So you weren't, I was going to say, so you weren't agonizing over, oh, which is the healthiest option in the Indian restaurant? You were just going for all. and having less. I ate, the, I ate the same thing I had before, I just ate less of it. That's interesting. Uh, if I was, if I was, I, I took, I mostly work at home um, with a little bit of travel, but at home, what I would have before is, for example, a lunch would be either soup or a salad. Mm -hmm. And I would have, before I would have soup, and a big ciabatta roll with loads of butter on it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just having the soup. And maybe if I did have some bread, instead of having a whole ciabatta roll, I might have half a ciabatta roll or maybe a quarter of a ciabatta roll just because I would find a bit of bread. Or mm. I might have some croutons on it instead of a, a lump of bread. Yeah. Um, breakfast, because it was easy and um, lazy, I'd have a couple of pieces of toast and some jam or marmalade or something on it. Now I'll have a piece of fruit. So. Mm. If there's one thing I have taken out, I, have, I probably have taken out eating bread. I didn't eat a lot of bread, but I did eat some. I'd have toast two or three times a week. I'd have, you know, rolls with my soup maybe two or three times a week, or, or maybe a sandwich for lunch. Now, mm -hmm. instead of having a, a salad sandwich, I'll have more salad, and I might have some croutons on it or a piece of bread with it, rather than just having a, like a big sandwich. So there's less bread and there's more salad. And as you know, salad got like zero calories on it. Um, I, I, I'm obsessed by avocados. I always have been. So, you know, even a salad for me has still got a, a good amount of calories in it because I might have a oh. whole avocado and a piece of tuna and um, a whole bunch of salad. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm starving myself. It's very filling. You know, that kind of salad yeah. is very filling. And it probably is. I'm not counting calories, but I'm guessing that's probably five or 600 calories. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing... If I was to guess, I'm probably eating fifteen to eighteen hundred calories a day, as opposed to two and a half to three thousand. That's <laughs> probably the difference. That's great. So you sort of you, you basically halved your calorie intake without without restricting any any specific thing, yeah. even other than the yeah. bit of bread. I mean, even that, it's not something you've yeah. said. Right, I don't eat that. I can't eat that. So um, hmm. yeah, no, it's uh, very interesting to sort of hear that hear that sort of progression. You know, the, the mental. Oh, uh, and, and and, and less cakes. <laughs> Again, uh, I you say less. Uh, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't have cake. Absolutely. Just, okay. So most days, because I happen to like them, well, most not every day, but you know, I'll often have ice cream. But mm -hmm. something like um, three scoops, I'll have you know a big spoonful. Um, mm -hmm. I do love chocolate. I can't deny that. Um, <laughs> and and amazingly, there's a new handmade chocolate place near where I live. And do amazing flavors, uh, but I eat chocolate most days. I, you know, but I don't. Instead of having a lot of chocolate, I'll have a couple of pieces of chocolate, just because I happen to like like it. So it's not. I, I'm not taking it away. I'm just not having as much. Do you find and that you? Sorry. Do you find that your appreciation for food, for example, when you're eating that little bit of high quality chocolate, do you find that you appreciate that differently to when you, I don't know, stuff the chocolate bar down your face kind of yes. thing? Absolutely. And, and, and I was never one for stuff, stuffing a whole chocolate bar down, but I, would, I do like really nice chocolate. And it is, I, I, I eat really nice chocolate. Um, and so, yes, it's, 
eating something that I really like and having a small amount of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I do appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. Because when, when I was eating from a space of fear of missing out, it was to fill up. Yeah. I could never get enough of what I don't really need. So I didn't really need yeah. it. I didn't really want it. I was filling up. Yeah. Whereas now I'm enjoying, really enjoying what I eat. Yeah. And actually that, that pro- I probably slow down eating. And mm-hmm. also then I feel full at the appropriate time and don't overfill yeah. myself. No, as I say, it takes what it takes 20 minutes, isn't it? To sort of feel yeah. also stop eating 80% and then, but, but none of us, yeah, I'll say none of us do, but some, some of us do. But um, yeah, we all spend so much time rushing and just, just throw food down without even appreciating or thinking or considering it's all sort of done in a hurry. But um, yeah, yeah so much um, truth in that. But um, but is it? I think also interesting to me as well is that okay? I I sort of think I I view things. I view my coaching, view my kind of thoughts on life through a through a health perspective, and you know, reaching optimum well being through um, reaching optimum health. But so many all these thoughts, all the things we've discussed, you know, in the last twenty minutes or so, it's they all relate to life in general. It's not a weight. It's, it's not a weight loss thing. It's it's how you yeah. perceive so many elements of your life and that's where the power lies i think yeah. and where everyone can sort of you know gain something from this perspective even if they haven't got any weight to lose um well, well and i think that's why i shared the idea which is it's not about the weight yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think these fears of the fear of missing out or the fear of not feeling full mm-hmm. it, it shows up everywhere it can show up in a relationship yeah, yeah. in your business you know how many you know one of the things i consistently the consistency comes up in my coaching conversations is people are incredibly busy yes because they're filling up mm-hmm. but they're trying to get they're trying to get something that they don't really need what yeah. what it's really about is it's about being consistent with what you want it's about finding out what that true thing is what's a 10 for you mm-hmm. and then fill up with that and you'll find yourself being full really quickly mm-hmm. and so i i it completely it's not about the weight it's about mm-hmm. Actually, what are the drivers behind that? What are the drivers behind your eating, about your sex life, your relationships, your business? All of those things can become dysfunctional if you're driven by these kinds of fears. And the two that I picked out for me were those two fears of missing out and not feeling full. And that goes back to just being totally honest and totally allowing yourself to be totally vulnerable to what you're thinking and feeling kind of you know in, in the it's kind of stripping back the layers go one layer deep, yeah. two layers three layers and actually then you'll come to you know what what it truly is um and it's yeah comes back to the vulnerability again <laughs> yeah because um no it's been um it's, yeah it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you this morning and uh, i think i think that's pretty much covered all the things i wanted to dig into so unless there's anything else you want to kind of throw out there to sort of summarize but otherwise i think um you you, you summed up very well when you sort of said decide on who you are and then move towards it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And I think, yeah, that, that says a lot. I mean, just, just in life in general, just for people to decide who they are, regardless of where, you know, mm. where they're moving from, they're just understanding and deciding who you are is a, is a, is a first, mm. a first, um, a powerful first step. So, um, yeah, thank you so, so much for, um, yeah, chatting to me today. And, um, and for anyone who's, thank who's you, and anyone who's listening and watching and has, you know, has resonated with you, please comment or reach out or get in touch or just just put into action some small steps and um i mean obviously i'm i'd love to chat to people further but just yeah taking action and not just oh that's a nice video and all nice uh, nice um a nice audio and, and off, off you go every day just um yeah just have a little think i hope i hope these words have have kind of resonated with some people anyway so that was that was my that was my intention for reaching out to you <laughs> For my own Thank benefit. <laughs> I really appreciate I really appreciate the time and, and you creating the space for this. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And I'm glad I reached out to you. Almost didn't, so <laughs> so yeah. But uh, thank you very much. Thanks.